Good morning, everyone. This is where I camped last night. It's some 10 kilometers southwest from a fuel strip. I had a wonderful night in absolute silence. Now you can hear a few birds, but last night there was nothing around. This is one of the few parts where this 4x4 trail uses the tar road. Probably like 3 or 4 kilometers south of Fields Drift. The Orange River, the right bank is Namibia, and on this side still South Africa. When you get to Fields Drift border post, you leave the tab road and you turn left into a dirt road. This road goes through a fertile valley all the time. You've got the, the Orange River on your right and you will see a lot of farms and plantations, most of them on the Namibian side. But as soon as you leave the riverbank, you will be driving through an endless rocky desert. Soon you get to the gate of the Hellskloof slash Nababib Nature Reserve. It is a barren area located next to the Orange River on one side and the Hellskloof Mountain Pass on the other side. Therefore, you can imagine that you're going from a low altitude to not to a high mountain pass, but in some section is kind of treacherous. When I crossed this reserve, I didn't see any other car all day. I decided to drive around the reserve and uh, looked for some off-road to get to the river. And I didn't find many wheel tracks around, only one, and I decided to follow it. And when I was looking at the map to make sure that I was following the right track, this happened. Yep, stuck in mud. I was following these tracks and I guess those tracks are very old because I got really stuck in mud. So, first of all, let's get the tire pressure down a little more, use the shovel and the max tracks. The problem with uh, an auxiliary fuel tank is then the spell wheel gets too low. And this is solved upgrading your suspension and gaining some extra clearance. But the suspension that I bought is still to come. So the only choice is use the shovel. Alright, the wheels are free. Been digging here for at least 90 minutes with this sun and these flies. Alright. tracks and hope for the best hell yeah <sighs> fuck <sighs> look at that i hope that leaves a signal for the next one which rides to come damn i don't know if taking my truck out or start mining here. <sighs> Look at me. Whew, full of mud. This, this black cotton soil is the worst. I'm gonna take a shower before I continue. All right, much better. After a shower, everything looks different. I want to tell you a couple of things. First, Max Tracks. Everybody knows them. They are the best. Not the cheapest, but if they do their job, I wouldn't doubt get those Max Tracks for sure. And this shovel really, really works for digging mud or sand. 
it is intended to dig snow and it's long but you can make it short so it's different pieces that you can put together as long as you want um, getting something really long like this probably it's like a meter or a bit more it's really useful if you want to go beneath the car like where the DF is or if it's stuck to the axis as this was you need something like this or otherwise it's going to be very difficult for you to dig all the mud out or all the sand this really really worked beautifully and the shovel fits in here the small bag when something like this happens it's not the first time not the last time of course i always remember what my instructor in 4x4 told me he said when you get in a situation like this don't panic the worst thing you can do is panic and then you start doing stupid things you waste your resources and you get tired and uh, you start feeling that you cannot cope with it and the first thing you have to do is relax assess the situation have something to drink because it's, it's gonna be hard and it's hot and the fucking flies will find you right away and you have the right equipment you have time you have food you have water you have all you need you will survive but don't rush into it you follow a track thinking that it's the right one you see in the map the track is going that way you follow some other cars tracks and, and suddenly whoa back to the access i tried to reverse couldn't do anything and i knew that the, the more you try the worse when i got off the car immediately i saw it was black cotton uh, mud it's one of those muds that on top seem to be like a hot grass but then it's really muddy underneath so when i saw it was bucked to the axis i thought ah this is bad but what i learned from here is don't follow some other cars tracks if they're old but those were the only tracks around shit happens after the mud incident i continued through the reserve and I uh, went up the mountain pass and there are a couple of things that are really interesting the first one you will find some Bushman petroglyphs near the road but it was a disappointment when I saw what people do with that this is a shame what are people thinking when they come here to write on this there are more graffitis than petroglyphs There's also a very interesting thing that you will find on your way up the mountain. It's a place where everybody leave a, a stone pile, a stone cairn. And um, when you get to that place, you see like hundreds of shrines in the middle of the desert, hundreds of kilometers away from everyone. It's like a tradition. If you come here, you pile your stone on top of another stone, like a little tower. Look at That's my little shrine. This section west of the nature reserve, it's terrible. Not difficult, but it's terribly coordinated. Welcome to the Richtersfeld.
After Ixfontein, there is a mountain pass, which is very rocky. The road is not good, lots of stones and rocks. It is narrow and it is long. So after that mountain pass, you get to a sandy road, which is much better. You'll start to see sand piling on both sides of the road. And this road is not really good because it is very corrugated, but it's in much better condition than the mountain pass. If you continue driving on this road, you will get to Kubus, which is closer to the Richtersfeld National Park. But I took a detour to Tiuhuk because I wanted a special place to come tonight. Now that looks like a good spot to spend the night. to camp tonight. Look at this. Beautiful. And the truck is here. And cooking dinner. The desert can be very windy at night. It's been like this for at least four hours. In the desert, it's always a surprise. When it's hot, it's scorching hot. When it rains, it's pouring rain. And when it's windy, it's really windy. The wind is very strong. Very strong. less windy up here than down there. Beautiful rock wall with this light. I continue north and I enter the Kubus conservation area which is located right southwest of uh, Richtersfeld National Park. The Kubus is a small town. You, you will find a few shops there. But looking at the map, eh, I thought you could enter the park from the southwest. It seems that it gets into the Richtersfeld National Park. But at the end of the Conservancy, the trail goes in a very steep climb that I didn't like. The problem is that when you look at the map on the Richtersfeld side, it's not clear that both trails are connected. But now that I can hear and I saw that mountain pass, I think it's, if it's possible, it's going to be extremely difficult. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I saw there was a way into the park, which was not the the gate. It was it was so? What if you come and you drive here? You can't. But can you, is is there a trail that lets you come? No. This is what I thought. I was when I turn around, I was somewhere here, and then I saw the map that it was this small portion. 
nothing in there and I wasn't sure if you could cross so I preferred to turn around. So for those of you who are wondering how big this park is, this is the main gate and the road goes through there till here. Those are 20 k's. 20 k's. So you can imagine the rest of the park. is a transfrontier park that means that one part is in South Africa and the other part is in Namibia but as of today the border is closed that means that you cannot cross to the other side so if you want to visit both sides you have to take a long detour altogether probably is like between 200 and 250 kilometers so if you're planning visiting both sides of the park have that in mind place to come. 